Hi, welcome to Nature Sketch Creates Honeybee step-by-step -step painting instructions video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use Nature Sketch Creates step-by-step -step painting instructions to paint a honeybee. First, collect all your materials and make sure they're ready to go. Remember, this is just a sketch. Take your time, have fun, and don't worry too much if you think you made a mistake. Let's get started. Step one, transfer the image to the watercolor paper. Tape the top of the transfer image to the back of the watercolor paper. Make sure you don't cover any of the transfer image itself. Place the graphite transfer paper dark side down, light side up, onto the watercolor paper, and then close that down flat. Now you're ready to get started with transferring your image. Go ahead and start anywhere you like. I'm gonna start on the antenna. Just gonna start with tracing over a couple lines. Then I'm gonna make sure that those are actually transferring. Go ahead and check, it looks like they're transferring. You can also check how dark those lines are. If that's too dark, too light, or if it's too dark, you wanna do a lighter pressure. If it's too light, you wanna do a harder pressure. You do want to be able to see those lines so you can draw them in later. Go ahead and go through and trace over all of the lines. They don't have to be exact. You can put some music on, audiobook, whatever you like, whatever is most relaxing for you. And if you get interrupted, when you need to come back to this, you can at any time because this tape is holding this image in place. So just go ahead and go through and trace over all the lines. You want to check a couple times to make sure that all of the lines have transferred. I find flipping it up and down is the best way to do this. I'm going to readjust my graphite transfer paper. And then it's optional to add in the hole punch lines or and the common name and the scientific name. I'm going to leave out the whole punch lines and just add the common name and scientific name. You can add the whole punch lines at any time by redoing this setup. Once you're sure all the lines have been transferred, go ahead and remove the graphite transfer paper. Set it aside. It can be reused many times over and over and over. Take the tape off the back of the watercolor paper. Go ahead and pull this tape off. You can reuse it as well many times. Set it aside to reuse it another time. And also keep your transfer image, be using it while we paint. So you'll need that as well. So just set that to the side for later use. Go ahead and remove any unwanted marks with your kneaded eraser. Sometimes the kneaded eraser might need a little bit of meeting first. And take it and just lightly move it across any spots where there's some unwanted marks. This graphite transfer paper is really great about not leaving too much graphite behind where you don't want it, but here I must have made some marks that I didn't want. So I'll just use this eraser to remove some of those. It's a sketch, so I'm not too worried about some unwanted marks. Pencil lines can add some fun character to the image. If your marks on the image itself, the transferred image, are too dark as well, just go ahead and go over. You need to erase it just a little bit to remove those. And then you can move on to step two.
Step two, paint the base color of the bee. So first mix the bee yellow. Want one drop of the 13H Hansa Deep Yellow. Make sure to shake it up just in case some of the paint has settled. One drop. And two drops of the 25H Hansa Yellow Medium. A little bit it has settled on the side of the paint pigment, so I'm going to mix that in a little bit better before dropping it in. This paint is very concentrated though, so if you don't get all of the paint pigment mixed in, it's still going to be a great color. Two drops, one, two. I'm take my water brush, setting my cap to the side, squeezing a little bit of water and mixing that color together. Just a little bit more water because we're going to start with a very wet or light wash. And first, I'll check that on my dab it off a little bit on my towel and then check it on my scrap paper here. See for the bee yellow, it's being the kind of the drier color. So that's still on the more concentrated, drier side, and we want something a bit lighter. I'm just going to paint in that first layer. It's gonna be very wet and light. So I'm gonna pull a little bit of paint to the side. I'm gonna add water to it using my brush. If you don't have a water brush, you can use a regular paint brush to do this by just adding some water in. And go ahead and dab it off on my towel again and check the paint on my test paper here. And I'll just apply it to all the spots using the image step two here as reference. You can see that's the same color A, and then the drier or concentrated version is gonna be that B color. A little darker, and this one is lighter and wetter darker and drier. So we're going to use that A color I created, referring again to this image here. Dabbing it off on our towel before applying it to our image itself. In order to protect the painting while you're painting, use your transfer image for a place to put your hand. That way your hand isn't directly on the image itself. And I like to start left to right to prevent smudging. And this is a sketch, it doesn't need to be exact. Just go ahead and add some color, some paint, referring to this image here. Again. Let's dry. It should dry by the time you finish that layer. Add just a little bit of the drier version. So we're trying to keep this wing transparent. Put the lightest color of A in there, lightest layer. And then go ahead and take that slightly darker version and go over the B in a few places just sparingly. 
little bit darker. It's always best to start on the lighter side. Once that's dry, add B, the color B, the drier version of the B yellow, um, just in a few places to add some shadow and define the shape a little bit. So at the top of the head here, under the head. dab it off on your towel in between and then on the legs just creating a little bit of definition Done, just let that dry and then move on to step three. Step three, paint a second layer using a drier, darker B yellow. So again, we're going to use color B to add another layer. Starting with the antenna, referring to the image three in step three adding that color throughout. So it's going to go on to the antenna, to the head, top of the head, the bottom of the head under the eye. A little bit here in the thorax. And the four legs. This is a sketch, it's just very rough, so it's kind of getting the paint in there. See, not trying to be super exact, just an approximate. When your paint starts to get less concentrated, you're not seeing a dark enough color, just pick up a little bit more and dab it off in your towel. Add it to all these legs, so in the middle legs the back, just adding more definition to that shape of those legs by having a darker side and a lighter side. Kind of wherever a shadow might be. And then adding it to the hind legs as well, into the little grooves. Tarsus foot and claw. Okay, back into this hind leg here as well. I missed a mark there uh, when I was transferring. It's not a big deal. I'll add it in later. Top of the abdomen, near where the meat, the wings meet, there's some, um, just some color, kind of showing through the transparent wings. And then it gets much darker into the abdomen that's not covered by the wings. liberal about adding the paint at this in these areas but at the top it's not quite as dark just kind of add it in there along the bottom and 
washing it through. If it's a little darker than you want, or a little lighter, you can always add more paint later, so don't worry too much about it. Once you're done, let that dry completely and then move on to step four. Step four, paint in the bee brownish orange. First mix the bee brownish orange color together. Well, one drop of the 33H raw umber. Mix it up. Take one drop. And then four drops of the 13H Hansa Deep Yellow. to add some water. Mix it up. It's adding a little bit more water by squeezing my brush, dabbing it off onto my towel and testing the color. Add a little bit, take a little bit of the paint to the side here and add a bit more water because we want a wetter color as well. Dab it off onto my paper, my towel, and then put it on my paper test strip. We'll start with a lighter color first. Pick up a little bit of that. And referring to the image in step four, I'll be adding that first, and then that's letter C. And then I'll go through and add letter D on top of that in these darker areas, as seen in the image. Also, it's good to have your final reference image to refer to as well because it's larger. So again, I'm going to start left to right and just referring to this image, add in the color. And I'm adding in color C. Once you've added C to the B, go ahead and let it dry before adding D. Now that this is dry, go ahead and add D. Again, don't worry too much about getting everything exact. This is just a sketch. Just getting an approximate. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of brush orange in the dryer area so I have a dryer and a wetter spot and put it on my towel first I'm gonna add a little bit of water because it got really dry if you want you can test that on your test strip again and then I'm going to add it just as I see in this image if you think you maybe you're not getting it exactly where it needs to be don't worry it doesn't need to be exact just an approximation. And you can use this larger image to refer to. One thing to note is there are little 
few places that kept blank. Here, here, and here. So it doesn't have to be exactly the same. So here, this area is a little bit lighter. This area is a little bit lighter. And then just keep these areas from getting too dark here and then right around here. And starting again at, but there's also of course the light on the eye. It's just kind of where some of the shine, light has shined onto the bee. Again, starting at the left and going right and referring to both the image in step four and the final reference image. Alright, so I think I have all of D, the dryer B brownish orange where I want it, and if I miss something, it's totally fine. I can change it later on, add to it, and it's also fine because this is just a sketch. It's not meant to be exact, and every time I paint, it turns out just a little bit different. So your painting might look a little bit different at this point, but it'll still look great when we're finished. So when you're done and you're happy, you think you have enough paint in the right places, go ahead and let it dry and then move on to step five. Step five, paint in the bee brownish black. I've moved my palette around so I have space for mixing that color, the bee brownish black. I've also added some more water to my water brush and I found a clean spot on my towel to use. And you can test to see if your painting is dry by just kind of lightly tapping it and seeing if any paint comes off. That way you don't, if you move your hand like this, you'll be smudging it, just lightly tap. So go ahead and mix the bee brownish black. One drop carbon black. And three drops raw umber. Add a little bit of water through your paintbrush. This is very, very black on your palette. 
and then dab a little off on your towel again and test it on your test strip. And add more water, put a little paint to the side and add more water like we did with the other colors to create that wetter, lighter color to start with. Again, I'm going to add these colors E and F, the darker, drier color, to the painting. You want to start with a lighter, wetter color, E, referring to step five and your final reference image. And again, I'm going to start on the left, make sure I use my transfer image as a protection for my painting. So I'm going to go ahead and go through and add E, the grayish brownish black colors here. And you can add you can add to the darker areas too and then just add another layer with of F there. So anywhere that this dark area is, you can add color E. Let's just go throughout and add in any of those gray or black areas you see in the reference image on step five. And don't forget, this is not about getting it exact. This is about approximating the color. So I think that's all the color E in my painting and I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to add F. So this is dry again, test it with your finger and pick up a little bit of that F. It's going to be pretty dark, it dried while you were waiting for E to dry. And again, referring to step five, go, go ahead and go through from left to right, if you're right-handed, and add in that color where you see it. Again, this is your representation of a B. Add in the color. And don't worry too much about it being exact. I think looked at it a few times from looking at step five and my painting here and I think I've added in all the areas and if I haven't, you know, no big deal, it's just a sketch or I can add it later. So I'm going to let this dry again and then move on to step six. Step six, add highlights. Make sure your painting is dry again before you're going to add that, the highlights of the Hansa Deep Yellow. Also, find a clean spot on your towel. Maybe turn it over. Get the black, make sure the black is out of your paintbrush. So you don't want to mix that into the Hansa Deep Yellow. Go ahead and grab Hansa Deep Yellow. Shake it up. I'm just going to need maybe just one drop. 
and add it to the areas where you see this color in the body. Again, not trying to be exact, just so just a sketch, we're just getting an approximation. So wherever you'd like to add this highlight color, go ahead and add it. I'm just going to add some water to it and test it on my test strip to see if it's the right consistency. Pick up some new paint, dab it on my towel and go ahead and add it in. It's fun to add the highlights. It's probably my favorite part of the painting, just loosely adding it in. And again, you can refer to your final image here as well if you want to see where those highlights ended up. that that's it. So just let that dry before moving on to step seven. Step seven, add ink lines. This is the step in which your picture is going to come together. Right now you might be thinking it looks a little ugly in this ugly stage. Just what it's sometimes referred to as when you're painting. So once we add these lines, it's going to all come together for you be very satisfying. So start with the 005 micron and basically you'll just want to add an outline to the B as seen in the final image, this image in step 7, and it might be easiest just to look at your uh, transfer image to see those outlines. But this is where if you left your lines on the darker side, you'll be able to see them as you draw them in. You'll also still want to use this to protect your painting from your hand. So, or you can use any other paper you have that's clean. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use my Hello, I'm a Honey Bee, a little about me. I like to start left to right, so I will start left to right. This is so I don't smudge my paper. And again, not exact. Just go through and trace over those lines you already have. If you're not sure, some of them you can't see that well. Just refer to your transfer image or the other images you have. Just outlining it and go through the whole image. If you don't get any something exact, don't worry about it. If there's paint on the outside and you want that to be on the inside of the image, just redefine those lines. This is your sketch. It's a representation of a bee. It doesn't need to be exact. So just relax and go through and draw all those lines in. Once you think you've added all of the thin lines, that includes the little hair lines, you want to make sure to refer to your final image to see where the little hairs are on the bee, on the abdomen, and the legs, and the head, and the back, and the little lines on the wings. Once that's all in, you can go ahead and move on to the larger black micron, the zero one. So now I'm going to add the 01 black micron lines. I'm going to use them to write the common name and the scientific name, and then also some thicker outlines on the legs, wings, and some of the hairs as well. Make sure to refer to your final image or where some of those thicker lines might be. And so just go ahead and go through and add those lines.
When you think you have all of the lines you need in there, you can go ahead and move on to using the 08 micron. You can always come back and add more ink lines of any size, so don't be afraid to go on and then move back, back to the 01 or the 05 later if you see something that you might have missed that you'd like to add. And this is your painting. It's not going to be exact. It's a sketch. It's just for fun and it's an approximation representation of the bee. So just relax and have a good time. So lastly, add more ink lines using the 08 micron. This is the thickest of three microns. And just go through, refer to number seven and your final image for any of the dark black areas. You th go through and add them in little lines you can just fill it in whatever works best for you and this is your image so don't get too caught up with making an exact replica of either seven or the final reference image just go ahead and go through and add in dark areas it should be really satisfying to finally see those filled in together. Make sure to take a moment to look at the pictures from seven in the final image and your image to see if it has all the black areas that you want, all of the thicker lines that you want, and all the paint is as bright as you want it to be. You can add more paint at this stage too if you'd like. These pens are waterproof. And then you can wait for it to dry and then add more ink lines as well. So this is your painting. This is your sketch. So. Make it your own. Feel free to add more or less, depending on what you're looking for and what you like. Thank you for joining me. I hope you had fun and relaxed a little. Next, you have some options. You can add holes to this and put it in your sketchbook. You can frame it, you can gift it, and make sure to share it on our Facebook fan art page. I'd love to see it. Don't forget to sign up for the newsletter for future releases of lessons at naturesketchcreate.com.